um, have the founders of a very exciting modular ADU company here in uh, California. And they're, you're basically soup to nuts uh, as far as from somebody who has the thought or an idea of adding an ADU to their backyard. All they have to do is make a phone call or send an email and lickety split, they can basically end up with an ADU not too long later in their backyard. So I'm going to let you guys introduce yourselves and, uh, and then we'll kind of, we'll, we'll get into it. So, so please tell us, tell us more about uh, who you are and, and uh, what we're going to be talking about today. Sure. Um, nice to meet you all. We're very excited and thanks Eddie and Haley for the opportunity um, to be on your show and, and it's a great privilege of ours. Uh, my name is Tom Ginsberg. This is uh, Ken Baltariski, my partner. Just a bit of background. Um, both Ken and I are not construction people and that's a big, um, I guess, a sort of innovative um, thing in the construction business because uh, most people that we deal with nowadays are coming from the construction business and we feel this is actually an advantage. Um, we are actually more of project managers in our experience. Um, I, I myself uh, was a senior attorney uh, before starting Adore Homes and managed uh, you know, M&A deals and, and fund formation for investors for many, many years and you know, manage those projects for, for clients. Um, Ken, I mean, I'm uh, personally, I came from the tech. Uh, I used to run uh, service organizations, sales organizations, and, uh, and I feel with all the information and the knowledge that you know, I gained over the years, uh, I can do something you know, different than the tech. So, yeah. and I, have, I always had passion, you know, to construction. So it's time to, you know, use the knowledge. And uh, that's how we came up with the, you know, our business. And, and it's, um, it, 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 construction is one of those areas where there are a million different details that pop out of one little decision. Right. Um, and the management and tracking of that part is, and uh, complicated. I, you, Tom, you, you had mentioned something to me that I, I found um, kind of interesting was how you felt when you got deeper and deeper into the field of construction, not having been in it before, that how broken it was um, uh, in that process. So, yeah, uh, it's, it's amazing, Eddie. The, it's, the, I mean, I, I totally agree. What we are finding out is that this industry hasn't been disrupted for more than 150 years. You actually build homes today the same way you built them in, you know, previous centuries. Um, and honestly, and I'm not trying to badmouth anyone, the attitude and the service um, level that the end user gets is sort of comparable to what people were used to get when they, you know, we're purchasing and, and handling with with the professionals in the back in the you know back in the days before the world of uh, service and and customer first sort of um, notion came into play which i think you know started in the 90s or maybe the beginning of the 2000s where companies really started to get measured by the level of service so ken and i were brought up to the industry uh, each one you know i'm from the corporate legal world, Ken is from the technology world. We were brought up and educated, so to speak, um, to that notion of customer first, honesty, delivery, and timing. Yeah. All those things we find nowadays are a bit broken in the industry we're in. And our mission is by far is to give people a better experience. We really believe that there's more that we can do for clients than any other company and we'll go over it. We prepared a nice say okay, presentation, cool. um, yeah. but we'll go over it. And, and that's, and, and going to your point, I mean, yes, um, we really feel clients should be first and, and, and rest assured that what they're getting and what they're being promised is delivered. And Ken and I 
whenever we give a proposal and you know from the first interaction we have with the client that's what we keep telling people and i hope that you know what what we are conveying um, from a professional standpoint it's much more than making money it's it's making people um have better life and the adu and we'll talk about it the adu is a is really a, a generator for that and it's also perception in a way you know there is a, some perception about you know when you're starting in a, a big project that you're starting at you know at some point and you end up with a longer time and, and and it costs you more money and what we're trying to do you know especially with the modular home that we are into because that's like the core business that we have right now is that you know it's going to be more efficient and it's going to be clear what you're going to get right and if they all the unknowns will be figured out during the process of the permitting once we got the permitting you know it's ready to go yeah, we're ready to go. We know what, what's going to happen. The beauty of, you know, the unit that we are doing, like any other prefab, is that, you know, you have the unit, you know what you're going to get. You can always upgrade certain things, but it's, it's mostly kind of cosmetic, right? I mean, you know, you're not building something from scratch, which, you know, then there are so many unknowns with the city and unknowns, you know, with the company, you know, the, the contractor that you're working with, they know what they're going to get. So we like mm -hmm. it. We can mm -hmm. uh, be more efficient. We mm -hmm. can scale. You know, mm -hmm. we can provide a good service and we can be mm -hmm. reliable. And, and that's a key. I, I think there's also a, um, the, a, an environmental aspect to it um, because you can be more um, uh, sparing with materials um, because it is more, you know, calculated in the sense exactly. of like your, you know, proper, you know, you're not going to make money in manufacturing if you're wasting raw materials and just, you know, running them to the dump the whole time. Um, so I, there's yes. overall, it's by, I think uh, a way more environmentally friendly way to uh, approach the process too. Yes, it's, it's absolutely. Yeah. It's a controlled environment and we've been to several factories and it's amazing, you know, the way they work, everything is engineered. Everything is, you know, laser focused on they, you know, the plans, the engineering plans, and now we, you know, we know that because we've been dealing with factories, engineering plans of a modular home are much, much more detailed than engineering of a regular construction. Typically, you know, the contract, the, the general contractor has its own engineer, has been working with the, with the guy or for many years, and, and, you know, they know what they need to do. In a factory setting, every screw, every, you know, every nail has its the, the you know address and designation it's amazing mm -hmm. um mm -hmm. so going to your point on efficiency and because that's how they can you know they can scale and they can make sure quality is is consistent they can have one house yeah. you know a bit off and the other house you know yeah. not it's it's very consistent and that's that's what we want and that's what we want to bring our clients so let's say maybe go to the presentation yeah yeah let me give, I I think, I, can you share or do I need to upgrade you? Uh, or do, are you able to do your screen share without any problems there? Let me see. No, you need no, to make us present. Yes. Let's make so, it become a presenter. Let me just uh, switch this up. Um, there you go. And you now have control. You, you are the command center, Tom, <laughs> so work away. Perfect. All right, so let's do present, um, oopsie, all right. Good. So this is another, actually on the background here, you can see another um, variation of color of our unit. You see it's sort of the same unit. It's actually the bigger unit we have. It's a two, two bedroom um, we oh. have. Um, this is more of a brighter um, sort of woody kind of color. Mm -hmm. And we have more colors, obviously, but you know, just just. Uh, just so, how big? How many square feet is this unit? We will show you in the presentation. Yes. We'll all share right. all the information. We'll go through everything. All I'm sure you're going to have lots of questions. Yes, so. okay. we'll get there. Okay. <laughs> cool. Right. So, I guess the first question we, you know, we're probably asking ourselves since we're talking today about ADUs in general, and you know, our company um, is just why really do we need to add an ADU? Um, and as I mentioned uh, at the outset of, of, you know, of our meeting, uh, we really believe that an ADU, you know, simple concept, can significantly improve somebody's life. 
Um, mm -hmm. And, you know, we, we just laid out some uh, use cases and reasons to add an ADU. I mean, we, we don't have to go through all of them. Um, you know, I can just touch on a few. Um, the, the increase in property and resale value of a home is instant, right? It's not like you, you're buying a home and then you have to maybe buying a fixer upper and then you have to remodel it and wait for some kind of appreciation by adding square footage in a modular fashion, just putting the unit once it's ready in your backyard, immediately, automatically almost, the property value goes up. Mm -hmm. It's just a fact. Um, and, and, and one of the things that- And we're we gonna test to that. Like we, we have a, a, a listing coming up in, in Oakland mm -hmm. um, that basically um, has an ADU in the back. It's a three bed, two bath house, okay. um, which is the kind of sweet spot uh of the the market and in the back there there's a one bedroom one bath adu which um they ended up uh, our our clients rented it to uh family members and they got both rental income and they got to have people who they really like and love to be around them um so um and because of this functionality and the ability to rent it and the extra square footage it has when we are now going to sell it it, it is is creating a significant bump in the value so yeah so so one of the things that we did with the property increase is that we created a, a kind of a calculation that we work with the big companies that are out there and try to understand you know what's going to be the property value increase just by putting the zip code it will and choosing you know the different adus that we are selling it will tell you like what's going to be the increase and and we can show you example yeah and actually or if you can see my screen. Yeah, actually, I don't think that I can see that screen. Can you see the screen right now? Just, Just the one where we're the reasons for an ADU. Yeah. Which I love, by the way, the bring your parents in, but adult children too. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, I'm gonna tell you, I'm gonna tell you a story that will make you cry in a second. <laughs> this is um, like the entire, I think. Uh, you can see now, right? Yeah, yeah, now we can see it. Okay, so for example, if I'm going to choose... This is our website, just so you know. Yeah, right, this is our website. So if you're going to choose, like, you know, a zip code, zero zip it's, code. Yeah, yeah, it's close to my zip code, it will give you kind of the... Uh, I mean, if you choose the different units, right? If you're going to choose the small one, it will tell you what is the property increase going to be at that area. So, you know, if you, if, you, if you purchase, you know, the unit for 200, and I'm just throwing a number right now, uh, um, it's gonna say it's gonna show you that the uh, property is gonna increase in 93, you know, K. Okay. It's also gonna show you what's gonna be the monthly rental income for the different units. So if I'm choosing the one bedroom, one bath, and so forth, right? So it will show you mm -hmm. how much it's gonna cost. And you know, any zip code that in the Bay Area, we're focusing right now only in the Bay Area. So you can check like New York or something like that. Yeah. But this is amazing. To, to the point yeah. is that it's it's gonna help you to understand as a customer like right away. You don't even need us, right? You can use it, you know, whenever you, yeah. you want. So, um, out of curiosity, so we we actually um, have a client interested in this um, who would be uh, they're actually on our call today uh, mm -hmm. watching, but they're they're gonna be purchasing in Marin. Um, so just. Uh, for, uh, let me pull up um, a, a Marin zip code. Uh, sure. Let's see if he's in the, the range of what we did, you know, our, with our with data numbers. numbers. Yeah, with the data yeah. numbers. So try, try 94941. No, it's not. <laughs> Unfortunately, it's not. It's not, uh, no. Do you have another one? Um, yeah, so 94942. Oh, no, probably not, because it's in the same area, you know. In the uh, same area, yeah. Uh, right. Information. right, I mean, you know, if you're going to choose like a nine, four. Uh, well, we could, do, we could do like, say, a uh, San Francisco. Yeah, like where I am is 94131. 94131. There you go. Whoa. That's, I, I'm trying to get a deal ratified, so I'm actually gonna jump out for a second. Uh, excuse me for a minute. Hey, Paul. I got this, don't worry. I can see, Ken, where your tech experience snuck in there, getting that oh, yeah. I love that. 
Oh and so, so, so we did a lot of analysis. I mean, very, you know, detailed analysis guy, same Tom, right? But, uh, you know, I did that. And actually in the next version that we're going to have, we're also going to have like, you know, a explanation about the different a mortgage option. So, you know, if you have a project that is going to cost you 200K, we're going to tell you, you know, how much you can make, you know, if you are um, want to rent the place. Okay. And how much you're going to pay for mortgage, if it's going to be like HELOC, if it's going to be uh, regular mortgages, things like that. So, so we're going to have it in, in really like in a week or two, I believe. We're going to have it out there. And Excellent. people can use it, right? It doesn't necessarily have to be under our, you know, kind of responsibility in the way of our product. But anyway, I mean, that's what we have for that one. Now, obviously, you know, everything that we talk about, going back to the slides, uh, you can see the slides, right? Yes. Okay, great. So, you know, we are talking about uh, rental and, and how people can leverage the additional income, the passive in, uh, uh, rental. Uh, one of the things that we have right now, and this is, I think, like across US, is the fact that the interest are low right now. It's really low, more than ever. Yeah. Uh, I think it's, you know, it's a shame not using, taking the opportunity and having any type of property. It doesn't necessarily have to be ADU, but for us, I think it, it's, you know, it's a great opportunity for any customer to do it. You know, that's for um, sure. you know, so, so that's, a, that's another a key thing. Um, obviously, everybody knows that we are working from home. I'm working from my office right now. Uh, I'm probably going to have my own ADU soon. But, uh, you know, having the COVID right now, it's, it's, it's a great solution for families. You know, you can still increase your property, potentially having a rental in the future. But for the time being, you know, using it for the COVID time. Yes. Uh, you know, again, uh, we have lots of use cases. We have a, a situation that we have a, a, a family uh, that they want to bring their kids to live with them. But what they decided to do is to build ADU with us. They're going to move uh, to the ADU and their kids and grandchildren, they're going to live in the main house. Different use cases about, you know, different situations. That and, and that goes to my point about us helping change and help people's lives right it's more about you know construction and selling and you know what everybody's doing we feel that in this you know chapter of our lives we're really tr managing to change people's lives just one example um you know one of the use cases is um you know bring your in-laws and parents i just had a call a week ago um you know, because of COVID, you can't really see your elder parents, right? It's, you're risking them if you do that. But, you know, all their lives, they were waiting to get grandchildren and spend time with them and you want them around and it's a summertime now. And, you know, that woman was speaking to me, we just met, right? She, she saw our advertising and called up and started tearing because, you know, we had like a nice conversation and she said, you know, with your unit, I can actually see my parents and spend time with my parents because I'm lo I feel like I'm losing them. You know, my father is a bit ill. My mother is, you know, okay, but getting older. The, the grandchildren are dying from, you know, missing their grandparents and it's tough. COVID, you know, really has shaken us as you probably as you experience and know. And, you know, with a simple lady, you, you can actually, you know, change the whole picture and you can do it quickly. Yeah, the quality of life definitely. I mean, you can see the. So I, you I, got I, me. Yeah. You got me really excited. You know about um, helping that specific uh, lady. Um, you know, we, we went there. We saw the property. Yeah. Thank God. You know, I was during you know driving there. I was afraid that it's not going to be feasible for us to help them because we sometimes we have power lines that can block us or we have all kinds of limitations. We're going to touch on this in a second. So I was praying that, you know, we can actually help her, you know, leave aside the deal, just helping her get the parents uh, near her. So, you know, that's what we're all about. Um, so, yeah, so these are, as we can see, we can talk for hours about the reasons and the motivation to add an ADU. Um, we, we keep saying it's a no-brainer, but, you know, you're going to see soon how really it's a no-brainer, at least from a financial standpoint, but we'll get to it in a second. Now, we wanted to touch a bit uh, on the law and regulation. As you probably know, um, new law has passed and, you know, additional five bills has passed in, since uh, January 2020. Uh, the governor made a firm decision to um, sort of attack the housing crisis in California. 
the fact that teachers and firefighters and police officers, you know, ordinary people can't really live in most places uh, in California, which is not good for, for our society and for our country in general. Um, so he's he's been, you know, very strong advocate for that and, and the, the law passed because he backed it really firmly. Um, we wanted to touch on, you know, when it comes to an ADU, what are the changes, the major changes, major changes uh, that people should be aware of? Um, parking was a major um, major issue before the new law because every time you came to a city and asked for an ADU permit, they said, "Oh, you have to take care of parking. You have to create parking spaces. Otherwise, you won't be able to get the permit." So the state really knocked that out. Uh, there's no requirement, there's no impact sort of fees about creating parking spaces, which is amazing. Which is huge, yeah, because that, that, yeah, in, in a world with a small unit, like, does a studio or a one-bedroom apartment really need parking? Uh, you know, like that, that, that's huge. Yes, and they can park in the street and they can park with the, mm -hmm. the owner's driveway. There's ways to go around it. But it, trust me, it was so hard to convince the cities. I mean, they just didn't want to give the permits for an ADU. They want to keep their, you know, small town mentality, um, which is, you know, not good for 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 the purposes of of helping society. You know. Well, and I also think there's this mentality that everybody has to. We have so many clients now who who don't own cars, um, and you know, they they use. Uh, alternate forms of transportation and, and stuff, so, yeah. Uh, another B went down to four feet from the rear and side property lines. It's a big deal because now there's even more properties that are eligible for an ADU. Before that, you know, they just couldn't get the permit. Um, approval periods got shortened. Uh, the city have 60 days, mandatory 60 days to respond, right? They can deny or they can come back with comments, but they have a total of 60 days, according to the law, you know, it's still COVID time, so I don't know how much they are actually being um, compliant with this requir legal requirement, but, you know, the law states 60 days to receive a response, either an application, either a, um, a permit or sort of a comment, which is great because it used to be months and months prior months to and that. And, and technically the, the importance of that being the law is the fact that if they are consistently not uh, following this, then they're susceptible to being sued. Correct. correct. And, and fined by the state. We actually have a, a hotline um, that we can call the HCD, which is the sort of the regulator that controls um, ADUs. And they, they said, they told us many times, if, if the city pushes back, if, it, if they're being unreasonable, please call us. We'll give them a call and, and they will listen. We thank God we, we didn't need to. We, you know, we, Ken and I are very nice people. We, we don't want to confront anyone, but they, I guess the cities know that, you know, they're being watched, you know, because this is something the governor wants to do. So, mm -hmm. you know, that's the, that's the thing. So owner occupancy, it's another big deal, is no longer required. So if you are an investor, and Eddie, I know you have a lot of investors uh, as your clients, um, you don't have to live in the, in the house to, to be eligible to get an ADU. So you can get on the same property, the main residence you're now renting, and another unit in the backyard, um, which is amazing. It's just, you know, it's like, getting a bonus in the middle of the investment period, right? Uh, no, it's like winning, winning the lottery. Mm -hmm. um, Except you're like the government taking a share of it because we got to pay you to put the ADU back there. It's like they're tax. Always gonna, they're always like going to take some. Yes. <laughs> Even with the lottery, they're still taking some. Exactly. <laughs> yes. Uh, <laughs> yeah. if, you win the if you win the lottery in Ireland, it's tax-free. So, really? Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, but anyway, but we, we still we need to pay the federal. But anyway, yeah, uh, we, we we digress. So continue. Um, and then another major thing that changed is the required the minimum required uh, rental period. And um, what they did is 
we think very smart. Um, they don't want people to start renting, you know, on a daily basis. So streets can become like hotel streets or motel streets, uh, which I think is reasonable because you still want to keep it as a neighborhood. There are kids there. You don't want kind of all kinds of people coming and going every day. So what they did is essentially allow allow for a minimum of 30 days. And, you know, we see a lot of demand from uh, traveling nurses um, especially now with COVID, hospitals, you know, need reinforcement of, of workforce. So nurses are, you know, big players in this and they're coming to become tenants in those units. And that's a good thing for California and for our neighborhoods. Um, again, I think you saw on the tech side, yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, you know, on the tech side, is only, obviously we've seen uh, lots of uh, major and big corporate companies that bring their people, you know, to the Bay Area and, and you know, there are opportunities to rent the place for a longer period of time, but people gonna come and be replaced, you know, by the different employees. So, you know, uh, th there are opportunities, you know, with corporate as well. Yeah, but uh, we, we actually have a client who, with an ADU, use it, uh, rents to uh, nurses and um, uh, works that whole that angle of uh, nurses mm -hmm. who are traveling and, and on assignment and stuff okay perfect um, a bit about us we, we touched about um, why we started the company let's talk a bit about Adore Homes and our offering um, you saw you saw modern design it was very important to us to engage and partner with a architect that really is doing beautiful things right there are so many ugly boxes out there um, and we wanted to be different in that sense we wanted to bring regular people um, an amazing design a design you see if you drive around palo alto los altos hills this is the style the modern style you see this is what we believe will increase the property value as we discussed this is what will attract those techies we want as tenants, right? We want the Googlers and the um, Cisco workers and all those great guys, okay? They want something nice and neat. Um, so we, we engage with an amazing architect. Um, their name is uh, Become Design. They're featured on our website and they only do you know, multi-million dollar. Really big, they're, they're quite yes. well known for, for very big development. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, and, and, and it was, you know, at the beginning, they said, oh, ADU, we, we really do like mansions, right? Why do you, and we, we convinced them on our vision and we were lucky enough to be partnering with them. And they, they came up with this design for an ADU. Uh, our arch, specifically, our architect is an expert on space usage because these are smaller structures, right? So we want to make sure that the, the space is really used and we want people- And, and efficient. And efficient, exactly. And so that's, you know, she, she has done, um, obviously we spent tons of hours with, with her, but she has done an amazing work on every inch of, of our unit is really utilized. There's no like stupid, non-usable yeah. space yeah. In, in the space. Um, can you want to talk about a bit uh, the materials? Um, yeah, so one of the things that we did with the material is that we got into the detail of each and every pictures that we have, the outside, the inside, the countertop, the, the lights. Uh, we brought, you know, very, you know, nice look and feel, you know, uh, even recess lights. Uh, the material is very high quality, but what's important with everything that we are explaining about, you know, maximizing the place, the material itself, is that it's, it's affordable with the same price with all our competitive. I'm not saying that we are cheaper. I'm not saying that we are more expensive. We are affordable at the same price, but the quality, it's very, very good. And we have like a list of all the specification that we will be happy to share with our uh, different customers. Uh, but we got into the details. Just to give you a sense, I mean, it took us two and a half months to design those units. That's how, much, that's how long it took us to work, you know, with architecture, with the factories, and, and, and get to the point that we have a good, solid, you know, a high quality uh, design. For yeah. what you've seen right now, what you're gonna see, we're gonna talk about other units you know, in, in the next few slides. But that's one of the things that was very important to us. 
um, we can always do some customization, right? I mean, everybody is saying that, you know, um, a prefab home are not customized. I'm not saying that I'm gonna move the entire wall, but I can make different type of windows. We had customer that potentially wants to have like a pool house. So like a big window. Um, For, you know, with those foldable windows? Right, foldable uh, windows. So, Beautiful. you know, I, I mean, I mean the, the house as it is, it's coming like with, you know, entries doors. So we can do something along those lines. We can make some modification and we are definitely open to that. We had another customer that said that his house is a little bit too long for him. So we, I mean, we talk with the factory, you know, basically, you know, shrink it a little bit, yeah, only four, four feet, but he needed those four feet. So to say that, you know, um, that we are sticking to the, you know, the plans that we have in the engineering, we are not. We're definitely open to that. So, you know, there are some customization that we, we can do. Some of them easy, we can easy, some of them more complicated. But mm -hmm. we are definitely open to that. Well, mm -hmm. and the, the beauty of, of the prefab kind of model in, in all of this is all of this design, all of this experience that you have, you can, in five minutes, bring that into the process if it's needed for somebody. Because like, hey, it's already designed. Um, we just did this for somebody else. So we know how we, what we right. have to do. So if that's an option that you need, we can do that. And there's no... We're not, okay, wait for the architect to go off and figure it out and then talk to the engineer and then get that figured so, out and then go through the city to get the permits and figure that out. It, that's one of just one, there's so many areas where you can save time, but that's one area where there's a huge chunk of time just totally uh, disappears right. from, from and, a regular and, construction project. And, and, and the, the way that we, you know, when we have our process, and you're going to see it again in, in like two slides more uh, further, um, what we are asking, it's one single day to do the design. One day, and we can knock everything down. We can get you, I mean, at the end of the day, it's like choosing the one that you want to upgrade or the different colors. We did all the heavy lifting, as you, as you mentioned. One day, and you're there. You got it. Wow. From a design Incredible. Step. The rest Incredible. of it, we're going to show you in a second. Yes, another thing to uh, worth mentioning is uh, you know the speed in which we we deliver the unit and the safety hazards that are being um, removed. If you have kids and you don't want your backyard to become a construction site, I think you should definitely take the route of working with a prefab company, someone like us, which safety you know for safety comes first, obviously. And those complaining neighbors, you know, a lot of our clients are people that would never go with a general contractor or, you know, traditional construction project just because of their neighbors. They would, you know, they have good references. They can, they have a few uh, GCs that can, they can call up and, and have them build their unit, but they just don't want to deal with the neighbors. And because we're doing everything offsite, you know, they manage to keep the neighborhood nice and clean and quiet yeah. and avoid that, you know, angry, grumpy. Yeah. Well, <laughs> you know, what yeah. a, one of the number one reasons that the neighbors complain about construction crews next door is because they're there for months and months and months. They're all driving different trucks. They take up all the parking. They're smoking and flicking their butts across the, the, the fence and little things like that and are playing music, which, you know, it's a regular kind of a workspace for, for people, but that's really, it's those little things and having that ongoing day after day for months is eventually, uh, you know, some neighbors crack before others, but um, right. it's, yeah, it, uh, yeah. it comes up, yeah. Uh, yes. And you will probably tell us, but in, in general, after the site work is done for the foundation, how long is the installation of your unit in the backyard? Is that well, a... I'm just gonna jump a second for the next two slides, or mm -hmm. just to answer your question. So, so here is kind of, I mean, I know that we are comparing over here to traditional, but let's stick to the left side, because okay. that's, you know, kind of the, our side. You know, okay. doing the site assessment, getting, you know, the permitting and everything take between four to eight weeks, right? Okay. So it depends. Uh, I mean, it depends mostly on, on the city approval. That's yeah. out of our kind of responsibility in, in a sense that, you know, we don't own, you know, the timeline, but the relationships come in handy over here. So in San Jose, we can do it faster. We all know that San Jose is very open, you know, to ADU. Not that the rest of them are not. I'm just saying that it's a little bit slower, but mm -hmm. we can do it. 
So, mm -hmm. so four to eight weeks is uh, the typical time to get the permits. From our side, it's two things, right? I mean, we all know that prefab doing the foundation and, and, the, and building the, the units at the same time, mm -hmm. right? Foundation take two to three weeks with inspection, max four weeks. That's kind of the worst case. Uh, manufacturing the home, it's take between four to six weeks. I admit that, you know, COVID time might take a little bit longer for some of the factories that we are working with, but four to six weeks, that it's still the commitment that we got from the factories. So all but, in all- But that's also something that you don't, the homeowner doesn't have to deal with because that's happening in a factory in another the location. Yeah. The, the, the noise and, and, and the mess is going to be for three weeks max, you know, mm -hmm. on their side. Uh, and then we are waiting for the unit to arrive. So- and and you couldn't nearly be building the foundation and doing the site work while the unit's getting constructed. It's so incredible. simultaneously, there's an efficiency that can be there for uh, time constraint. Exactly, and all inspections, that's another big point with when you do modular uh, construction, all the inspections are done at the factory. So, you know, there's all kinds of inspections the building uh, must go through, plumbing, electricity, all of that. Uh, is done over there while the factory um, uh, is building it. So there's no unnecessary delays, you know, there's no rainy days that sometimes you cannot do work at. So all of that, as you mentioned, it's, you know, the time save and also the unknowns that are removed are enormous, enormous. It's, it's just a, a life changing in terms of stress that our customers are facing when when they're thinking about a construction project. And hey, you know, people want to use their backyard. We're always home. It's COVID times. Mm -hmm. We don't want the backyard to become, you know, a fenced, uh, no, do not enter kind of place. Mm -hmm. So I guess now it's even a better time to go with modular than, than ever. Than ever. Um, I think uh, uh, we want to say something about the uh, modules. Yeah, okay, so uh, yes, let's talk our models and what we're going to have in the near future. So okay. right now we have four type of models, as you can see. We have the studio one, which is the 378 square feet. And we have the one bedroom, one bed. It's the 490 square feet. It's, it's a kind of extension. I mean, think about it like, you know, you're taking a studio, you extend it a little bit on the right. Then you're taking the two bedroom and you extend it a little bit more to the left. The, the look and feel is going to be a, a, very similar to, you know, to the studio. But as you expanded, as you've seen, you know, the two bedroom, two bath background that we have over here, it's, it's, it's look nicer. It's look really good, very similar uh, one to the other. Same, uh, same material for all of them across the board, right? And, and what we're trying to do, you know, with all those units and, and what we are doing is that we are including the site assessment that we are doing, the consultation, you know, we have the engineering already ready for all of them. Uh, obviously, as we said before, we are taking the care of the permitting, uh, the site preparation. All the factors of having the house beginning through the end, it's on us. We are doing the project management for everything. So the customer don't need to do, I mean, zero. Literally, literally there is zero burden on their side. Uh, so, so we take care of that one. Now, now, just a little bit explain about the models. Uh, you see what we have right now, but what we do have, and you're going to see in the next few slides, and we're going to talk about it with the different factories, is that we have a good relationship with lots of them, and our portfolio is going to increase from the four that you see to additional units. Some of them we design, some of them are, you know, the factory uh, provide us. So we're going to have a list of at least 30 new units in the near future. Choose from, yes. Uh, literally, I'm talking about great amount of numbers. And all of them from the range of 400 square feet up to 1,200 square feet. Wow. So our portfolio is going to increase dramatically. Some of them is going to have some of the same material that you see over here. And some of them are going to look a little bit different from the look and feel. But I promise you, all of them are in a very top quality. Yeah. Literally all of them. Where are the factories that you use? We're going to get there. We're going to get there. <laughs> all done. We're not, missing any, we're not missing anything. Yes. What we want to show you right now, it's a quick kind of a movie. I mean, we thought about either talk about it or show you a movie that we created. Yes. We're going to show you a movie. Yes. Oh, only it's a minute. It's, it's, yeah. it's not a long one, but it's explained about the process and you can ask us any question. Okay? Okay. Perfect. Perfect. Cool.
Make sure you have, is there any sound? Yeah, I think the efficiencies on step two are great. Five to 15 days to obtain a permit. Once approved, we can begin where well, the manufacturer can start. <laughs> Thank you. Um, nobody's ever told me I'm adorable. <laughs> That's why we are here. <laughs> so, so this is kind of the process. And again, I'm not saying that we are different than any, you know, a prefab uh, company. They're doing, you know, the process. They're all doing the same thing. Uh, we are very efficient. We have a good relationship with lots of, you know, cities, with Hayward, with San Jose. So we're taking the advantage of that and, uh, and you know, um, the intent is that whatever the time frame that we give you as, you know, so-called the worst case, we can do it faster. So one of the customers that we are working right now, uh, probably in like in a matter of two, actually it's going to be nine weeks we can get in the unit, you know, completed. Nine weeks total. Wow. And I, wow. Nine weeks. Okay, so that's another one of the factories that we are working with, and we're gonna get there. In a one, one more note to make uh, that you know we have taken upon ourselves to help people that are interested in this uh, locate qualified tenants. Um, again, from taking the burden from people, we have a few more of the older side customers that they don't really know how to. They're asking us, okay, we want to rent this, and we want to get this to help our pension, and you know, stick around. Uh, the neighborhood, but how can we find good tenants? Um, and, and, you know, we're going to help them find tenants. This is a service we we're providing with no, at no cost to anyone who's interested uh, because, you know, it's, we can, we can find qualified tenants, those tech guys that everybody wants um, and just turn over the keys again to the tenants and handle the contracting with them and, and qualifying them. So, that's another point uh, that is important. So, yeah. hey, to your question on uh, from the factories, yes. Um, so, um, I think this is a very unique feature that Adore Homes have. Um, we are actually engaged with 13 factories. Um, unlike many other wow. companies, which has probably one, maybe two factories, we said, you know, since we cannot, um, you know, the, the advantage of working with modular is essentially timing and, and expedited delivery. So we cannot rely on one factory, especially now with COVID. Um, you know, it's hard to get uh, employees to come to work. It's hard, it's hard to build stuff. When you get shutdowns, if somebody is sick in the factory, they get to they get shut down. We, you know, we, we hear that, we list. So we, we make made an effort to engage quickly um, with 13 factories that are building our units. And you know the units that also that can mention that this is why we are able to provide such a selection, and so nobody will be turned away just because you know is missing a one foot or oh, doesn't like the the siding or something like that. We're really gonna have a, a huge portfolio. Um, so that goes to you. Yes, Chris. And, and, uh, and actually, it's a good. I, I can give you even a good example on that one. We had a customer that needed you know a unit that's gonna be the size of twenty by forty, right? I mean, in a normal situation, you're going to have one example. We just send him three examples from three different uh, factories that can produce it in a short time frame. Okay. So, so it definitely helps us to be more competitive. And more than that, I mean, you know, it's give a variety of options to our customer. They don't need to stick to just a single size and, and, and price. I mean, their price, give or take, it's the same thing. Price is not the issue. It's the look and feel. It's the material, right? So we're helping with that option, giving more than one. Uh, sometimes it's like make life, you know, uh, 
a little bit challenging for people to choose, but we're helping them out, yeah. you know, with it. Yeah, May I ask a question about um, sourcing the site? So, you know, <clears throat> Eddie was mentioning that we have some clients that are looking for a property right now, mm -hmm. um, and they are hoping to put an ADU on that property. And so obviously we want to look for things that have, you know, moderately flat lot, large enough to put it there. Mm -hmm. um, but obviously like we're in the Bay Area and, you know, the city, um, Oakland, Marin, we've got a lot of hills and windy streets um, that, you know, trucks can, it can be hard to get up to. So do you, in terms of um, your site assessment, if you have customers that are actually in the, like, shopping for their for the primary home phase are you able to kind of weigh in on um if you know they would be like hey we're thinking about you know offering on this property do you think you could fit an adu on this <laughs> are you able to help out in that regard and then additionally yeah. like if it's not perfectly flat do you have um how do you handle that so, so you're talking about situation that there is a slot right pretty much okay so so we actually we actually have a customer in los altos hills that in that particular situation right now. And what we did, obviously it's not straightforward, right? Because in his case, he has a huge slot, like, you know, at the bottom and way up at the, at the hill. And he didn't decide where you want to put it. Either way, you need retaining walls, right? No matter what, you need retaining walls. So what we did is that we actually engaged with a civil engineer. And uh, what was the other guy that we engaged? We, there was another person, I forgot. Um, um, yeah, uh, it's, it's a, a civil engineer and you actually need um, a, a You probably need a soils engineer. Did you need yeah, a soil structure engineer? engineer, right? Well, structure, soil engineering yeah. we didn't need in this case because we already had a guy that, that just built the main house. So we didn't ah. need that one. But anyway, to the, to the point is that we did engage with civil engineer and we are working with him right now to, uh, to determine uh, how much, uh, I mean, I know, we know we can do it, right? It's only a matter of cost. Sure. You, know, you don't want to have it too expensive. So, you know, I told you that, they, that the customer want two options, lower and, and upper. The upper one is going to increase the price dramatically. So, so it's because the scope of the retaining walls. Right. So what we, are, we, what we are able to provide clients, and again, we do it free of charge. We don't charge for assessments and for the advice. Um, just by telling the client, you know what, maybe if you can put it a bit of an angle and a bit of a um, bit lower, exactly as Ken mentioned, that guy saved, I think, probably 30K. I think, I think that, yeah, along those lines. I mean, you know, the civil engineer didn't give us the final price yet, but it's going to save a great amount of money. End of the day, you know, uh, we're trying to help them to figure out what is the most realistic one, what makes sense to them, because some of the customer price is not, is not a problem, right? They want to do the right thing. But we are working with the civil engineers. So we have uh, two companies that we are working with them. Um, again, the guy that we are working right now is doing a great job. Uh, we're, getting, uh, we're getting close, uh, uh, you know, uh, figure out the numbers and the locations where, we, where it's going to be. And uh, yeah, it's, it's part of the service. So yeah, it's part of the service. I'm hoping it answered the question. <laughs> Absolutely. I mean, basically I'm asking about feasibility and like how, you know, so, how involved because so, so, you seem to, I mean, you put, you put renters in the, in the unit. So I figured as much. You right. So, so, so I admit that most situation it's flat, it's easy, straightforward. Uh, some of them, you know, it's a little bit more tricky, just a little bit. We are working with, uh, we have great amount of GCs that we are working with them. Depends on the different location because we are all over the Bay and we have a guy like in the East Bay, we are in the South Bay. So we have a guy in the East Bay, we are working with him over there. Uh, he's helping us, you know, to do assessment for a property that it's really close to the edge of the property over there. So we're asking him, and you know, do we need if he has a doubt, we go into the civil engineer. If you don't have a doubt, we, we leverage in his experience. He's been there for 30, 30 years. Yes. So, so we are using our different GCs to determine, you know, about the assessment. If, if, the, play, if the house property is really, you know, straightforward, we don't need, you know, a GC to do it. We already know what needs to be done, how much it will cost. What is the right thing for the customer? Where to connect? So we are doing that assessment by ourselves. You know, that's knowledge-wise. But yeah, we are working with them. Perfect. Uh, financial wow. institutions. Um, uh, we're going to touch on the finances in a second, but just um, you know, we we wanted to to not only be a sort of a ADU provider. We because we are offering you know 
360 degree of service. Um, financial institutions we, we engage with are top notch, the US Bank, Patelcor, and we have uh, two amazing uh, mortgage brokers that actually shop for our clients. So we make an introduction. We are not part of the, you know, we're obviously facilitating this, but we're not part of this. It's not something we make money out of, but we're making sure that our clients are taken care of by getting the best rates nowadays and getting the best products. So you know, that's another service that we provide as part of, you know. And is this uh, relationships that you've developed with uh, Patelco and U.S. Bank for for financing the con the, the installation of the ADU or in what For the entire got? project. For the entire for the project. In yes. Oh. Uh, we don't. We and don't how, how do they how do they structure those loans? What's the uh, what's the thought process? Is it done as a you know, based off the equity in the existing home or is it, in, in is it done as a cash out refi or how, how do they do it? So, so the majority of the situation so far, it's, it is the equity of the existing house. Yeah, people right. built so much equity, you know, it's, it's yeah. mostly the, the, the right path. But HELOC is another option, equity line, you know. Um, and I'm going to show an example in a second of a client that did that. Um, but yes, uh, equity is typically the uh, refinance is typically the right uh, the right path for most people. And we talked about the GCs um, again. We wanna we don't wanna spread out ourselves thin. We um, right at the outset when we started, we said we need a network of of GCs. Not uh, we're not gonna be dependent on because these guys get busy. They're very busy doing their work, their projects. I'm sure you know, guys. You know. So we have to have a network of them and we managed to convince them that, you know, the volume we have and the, the, the level of clients we have um, is worth their while. And luckily, um, you know, we, we engage with, with a few of them in each region, you know, East Bay, South Bay. We have a few in each region, um, each one of them. And it's something that is important, maybe because Ken and I are coming from the world, you know, the cold where experience is the you know, a big thing with sort of older uh, GCs that has been around you know the gray hair really it's amazing you know when you when you go with a GC you, know, we, you come to a client with a GC that has the gray hair and the experience they've seen it all they've seen it all he looks at this and say oh you see this thing we need to, you know, make sure this is this and that needs to be fixed. So this and that needs to be uh, um, uh, taken into account. Um, and it's amazing. And we, we, we really feel that this is the value, you know, that those guys are, are getting. And, you know, even if they cost a bit more, we, we're fine with this because we want the experience. We don't want to be surprised. Cool. Um, cool. So can get into uh, what about some of the financials? Like, let's look at a a floor plan of say your most popular model and let's just talk a little bit about you know typical cost so we can kind of get everybody an, an idea sure. okay. so let's let's focus on the the one bedroom one bed because this is like the most popular that we have right now uh, the second one is the two bedroom one bed which is also popular but i think that you know the one bedroom one bed is, is popular, yeah, yeah. It, it's it's the most popular so so the price the way that we structure the price right now is that uh, it's 129 for the unit that's the price that's the unit that's coming with everything inside that and that's with about. the bathrooms uh, fully tiled bedroom, and complete floor, kitchen has and a stove and a, a dishwasher microwave. and a refrigerator yeah yeah, everything, and, and we will be happy to share with all our customers the specifications, because we have a very good specification about the details. As I said, like the screwdriver, you know, the nails. So, so we literally have the detail of everything. Uh, so that's the unit. Now, obviously, every property has its own unique, uh, um, you know, uh, uh, parcel. And, and what we're doing is that we're doing the assessment, like, you know, what Haley just mentioned about if there is a slot. Obviously, it's going to be more expensive, right? If it is expensive, then we need to figure out how much it's going to cost in addition to, you know, the basic. So we do an assessment for the foundation, which is including, of course, the printing for the water, sewer, and electricity. We are not using gas in our unit. And, 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 and of course, the crane, right? I mean, we had one a customer that the crane cost us 6K and another one that cost 28K, like 155 feet 
all the way to the back. Very expensive, very high. It's not just far, it's also high. So, uh, so, so it's changed, right, between the customer. So for us, it's very challenging to give a fixed price, but we are going towards that direction. But, you know, that's how we make a decision about, you know, uh, the pricing of the unit. Okay. Once we determine the price, and that's another thing that I think we are bringing to the table. Um, we heard so many horror stories about price changing throughout the project. Very typical thing for construction guys to change it uh, just because, you know, prices uh, go up, uh, materials cost more, all kinds of excuses. Once we determine the price, and that's why we, we take the time and do the due diligence, um, and, and we do a very thorough due diligence before we we come forward with a proposal. Once we give the price, there's not going to be any change to the price, even if we have to lose money. That's our cornerstone of our company. This is why we're here. We again, I mentioned at the beginning, you know, honesty and straightforward pricing. We're not can it's not bait and switch or something like that. It's a very very uh, accurate cool. pricing. Um, so that's why, you know, Ken and, and the civil engineer and, you know, we involve anyone that needs to be involved. Um, and sometimes, you know, we even take it upon ourselves just to make sure we, we don't get it wrong. Um, mm -hmm. also mm -hmm. for the client. Mm -hmm. Cool. So, so typical, typical foundation prep will say we got a, a, a practically flat lot, um, mm -hmm. where, where you know we've got good access where you're you're craning in you know over an existing structure that maybe is 40 to 60 feet in depth so you're you're probably going in off the street going back 75 feet or something mm -hmm. 60 to 70 feet um what what uh, like if we're is there tax on the unit for 129,000 there is no like that that's the cost of that I, ABU. I, I think and then there's going to be the foundation and the install cost, right? So I think I know where you're going with that. So, yeah. so to answer the question about what is the total for a project, right? Yes. Let's, not, let's put aside the unknown. Let's say that it's all known. All you know, basic houses like the majority in the Bay. Yeah, flat, um, flat the, uh, parcel. The, the price of the unit, it's 199 including everything inside. Okay. I think that's where you're going with yeah. the question. So basically all in the one bedroom unit installed average cost depending without and you know variables, but the average is about 200K to get the yes. one bedroom unit installed. Yeah, wow. so that's, that's the entire project. We're managing everything beginning through the end. No hassle, no mess for the customer. So wow. that's, that's, that's our price and for that one. It's a beautiful unit too. Can you, do you have a few pictures there that uh, you can kind of just, pop through there when you're yeah, showing that. Show. The... So you see the models that we have right now over here on our website. And, and again, as I mentioned, soon they're gonna be like lots more. Wow, wow. Uh... So this is an example of, you know, one of the locations that we are working for our customer to put it in, All right? And the bedroom. that's a bedroom, that's the bathroom that we have. That's the living room, and as you can see, sorry, yeah. it's our, you know, marketing. So you see, like, the lights over here, very yeah. unique, very, very beautiful, you know, just to do that. Yeah. And so, you know, that's kind of the living area and the kitchen. Mm -hmm. And it's the high ceiling. How high are the ceilings? It seems quite... Nine feet. The, tw how many feet? Nine. Nine from feet, the, wow. From, from the um, floor to the ceiling, nine ceiling. feet. Yeah. Yeah. That. Um, so, 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 I mean, obviously, you know, from a foundation standpoint, we're doing a concrete and and then steam wall, you know, crawling space. Either one of them, our preferences is do crawling space so people can move around if things not working like they yeah. used to, you know, thing yeah. bre breaks. Uh, so that's our preferences. But as you can see, we get into the details. You know, again, there is no gas, right? So it's tankless. You know, uh, water heater. Water heater. Yeah, that's the you know the bedroom. That window. You have the Murphy that, bed. If yeah, you want the Murphy an bed, that's an option that you have. Right? Yeah, it's an so option. Can... Absolutely. And here's the office. Yeah. Yes. Right. And that's like different colors that we have. I mean, you know what we find out that the majority mm -hmm. of the customer actually like that color. <laughs> yeah. So okay. I think Haley likes the the wood the the brown one, right? I do. <laughs> yeah. I'm partial to that. 
So yeah, that's 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 the unit. And and again, I mean, you know, when, when you're looking at the at the studio, it's without that portion, right? Yeah. We shift yeah. a little bit to the left. Uh, yeah. You already seen, you know, the other unit, you know, the big one. So yeah. Um, yeah. So and, and then that one bedroom. Like, go ahead, Haley. Sorry. No, I just was admiring the landscaping around that you have rendered. Do you um, also bring someone in to like, you know, straighten that up and put those beautiful uh, stepping stones you have? Of course, we, we won't leave the customer with a, you know, bunch of junk. Uh, <laughs> and yeah, landscaping, obviously, you know, it's dependent on each client's taste, but it's part of the service. It's, it's an extra, right? Because, you know, landscaping, there's all kinds of landscaping you can do, but the client won't have to rush and find a, a, a landscape artist to to finish the work. We, we work with everything, not just the landscaping. I mean, think yeah. also about electricity, for example. Some of them need to upgrade the you know the mm -hmm. panels. Some of them want to have a separate meter. So mm -hmm. we we help to provide any type of service if it's needed, right? Uh, and we're not trying to do any kind kind of markup. It's all about the service. All about the service. Yes. Cool. Love it. I love it. Wow. Can you put them on, um, can you do septic? <laughs> Sorry, these are really detailed based on what I'm looking for. <laughs> it depends. I mean, we have to, uh, uh, typically with these cases of, you know, if you're sitting on a septic line, um, the city will opine. It's typically a matter of positioning the unit, right? Where they might say, you know what, you know, maybe push it a bit to the left or a bit to the right. I mean, if you have the right sized lot, we can go about, or go around the septic uh, easement that is uh, probably there. Um, but yeah, um, it, it, the city, in this case, we need to, you know, get the city's input. Mm -hmm. It's not a straightforward answer. Never. Um, we wanted to just run a, one last thing just to bring it home um, to show Landing. you. Because I'm not convinced. I'm thinking. <laughs> not, yeah, if, if I'm not convinced. convinced. I know. I'm, thank I'm, you. I'm still, I appreciate that. I'm but still wondering if I should do this. Um, yes. You know, I think the, the easiest line that we kind of tell people is when you look at, like, even now where condo prices are, are, are say, a little um, um, uh, deflated uh, in the COVID market. In San Francisco, for a one-bedroom condo, if you wanted to buy an investment property to rent it out, uh, you're probably going to spend 650, um, 700, 800k, depending on location and size. But um, you know, in a lot of ways, adding this in your backyard, if you have the ability, is a third, if not less, a quarter of the cost and you get um, the same investment. And that's, yes. yeah, and, and in, so, which basically means the return on your dollar is way greater uh, in this regard. So, um, yeah. Yes, uh, I, and exactly, and Eddie, this is exactly, it's a great segue to what we wanted to emphasize. This is, this portion of our presentation is something we did to a customer uh, of ours that was, you know, we just ask, can you guys help me understand? Because some people are not so savvy, you know, mortgages and refinance, you know, they, they, this guy was an engineer. Um, and, and, you know, we, we came up um, with his, so obviously we're not reveal any names, but uh, I can show you exactly uh, how we, how we explain how this is a no brainer investment. And, and we think people should look at it, adding an ADU as an, as an investment rather than an expense. Right, it's not a remodel. When you do a remodel, you know some people will say it's you know it's also an investment in the in because it's, in the house is going to look prettier. But when it comes to an ADU addition, I, this is really an investment, and it's a no-brainer investment. And and we can we can show you how and why why we say that. Um, so for this guy, um, that family, they're, they're in San Jose, and they're if if they they, they were. Um, interested in the one bedroom and you know we typed in their zip code as we showed you earlier and it just showed you know based on our data vendors and you know the the, the sites we're using to collect the data that the 
price will be increased by 332k, right? Um, as you know, Ken mentioned the, the pricing previously, that's already, you're already in the profit, um, you know, just by adding the square footage. And then for rental, um, the calculator showed 2000 per month, which is 24k uh, of additional income per year. Um, you know, managing a backyard home investment is easier than managing a property. You, if you want to buy somewhere, you know, people like buying in Kansas yeah. City nowadays or Arizona, you know, managing the backyard. It's just over there. You, you see that what's going on. You can take care of things yourself if you need to. So that's a, an advantage. Now, let's see the effect of financing on the project, right? So we, let's start with the HELOC. You know, HELOC is where you you just essentially use your line of credit from the from the mortgage. So as you know, as we said, the project is about 200k all in. So you lo you borrow 200k. The interest rate is 3.5. So your an annual loan payment is 7k, and loan payment you know monthly loan payment is 583. Um, so. The ADU is making money every month, right? Because they're gonna rent it for two thousand approximately. Um, they're gonna pay the bank five hundred and eighty-three, so they're left with, you know, thirteen hundred. Um, excuse me, one thousand four hundred seventeen uh, dollars in their pockets every month, and that's you know that's money. Um, that's amazing. But even if you're doing it for the scenario where you know you're, it's family that you have there that's coming back and are you you want to rent it for for periods of time that um uh you know six months and then maybe leave it vacant for a while you know it, it works for itself but i i i do think and i think you've alluded to this that there is a customer base that you have where you get um like an older couple who've lived in a neighborhood for 30 40 50 years and they love their neighborhood but the house is way too big and uh, they want to stay in the neighborhood and, and, and stuff. But uh, what options do they have? Because, you know, exactly. there's a lot of... They can uh, rent it with the big and move yeah. to the... And move to the a the, Yeah, and move to the exactly. ADU. Yeah. Okay, then so, money, right? That then make even more money because the house obviously is bigger than a one bedroom or two bedroom. Um, absolutely. And we have a one client that, is exactly in that uh, use case. Uh, yeah. Older couple wants to stick around. Uh, the husband wanted to move to Florida, but the wife wants to stay here. Um, you know, because they went with us, Too they can stay in the neighborhood. Ooh. I know. Who wants to move to Florida? It's uh, well, we it's have some, we, we, we've done some. We've some clients who, who've moved to Florida. So yeah. uh, it's you. I think it's from human. Florida. Or, oh, okay. So. I don't <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, that, I don't know. I, the crocodiles there are, you know, they're alligators. A, the alligator, I know, a bit of, a bit of a turn off for me and Ken. Ken is a, but the heat. We have, we have a client right now who, who moved there. They've been looking to come back to the Bay Area because it's just too hot in the summer. They want to be there in the winters when it's cold here, um, and and uh, here where we have the moderate summer when it's just too hot there uh, um, but but hey I'm gonna have to uh, say I think this has been amazing and if we were looking what are the easiest ways for people to find you we want to look we want we want to talk to to you guys how do how do they find so, you so obviously we have our website adore-homes.com uh, you can always email us to info at adore-homes.com that's coming to everyone you know we're all perfect. getting the same email and perfect. we have the phone number right i mean uh, the 650-395-9882 uh, so those are the numbers everything is on our website it's easy to reach us we have the chat we always connecting to the chat us and the team so you know we are available 24 by 7 literally i think <laughs> i i love it you're it's like we're right into the source you know we're, we'll probably try do this same interview as a follow-up in like a year, 18 months, and we'll, we'll have to, 
try to get through a bunch of personal assistance just so we can talk to you for five minutes. Uh, sounds good. Sounds good. I, I, I signed up for that now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We're signing yeah. up for that now, for sure. <laughs> yeah, let's just book it now. Yes. Um, this is this is awesome, Haley. How how do people find us if they're if they're looking for us? If they want to ask uh, any questions in regard to this, we're we're always happy to talk about it. We we we're a big proponent. We uh, we think if the opportunity exists for people to do this, they should really strongly consider it. Um, so you know we're uh, we're always happy to talk about it. Um, Absolutely. You can find us at elevationrealestate.com or on Instagram at Elevation SF or on Facebook. You can find us where you're watching this right now. So you're already there. Awesome. All right. Great. Thank, Thank you guys you so, much. so much. Thank you so guys, much. This is Thank you. Amazing. Stay safe. Thank you, Eddie. Thank you, Haley. Looking Thank forward you. to see this Thank in you. action. Love it. Thank yeah. you. All right. Bye.